happen. It wouldn't be possible without them. So thanks very much to them. Um, it's really, really heartwarming and encouraging to see so many people here this evening um, showing their interest in the elections and showing that they care enough about what's going on to come here and listen. Um, so the general elections in Bahrain are scheduled to be held in two days' time uh, on the 24th of November. Um, this will be the second ballot since the Arab Spring in 2011. Um, but unfortunately, what should be such an exciting and such an energizing time for democracy in Bahrain has already become marred by concerns about the oppression of civil society and the crushing of opposition parties in the country. Um, the past few years have already seen the dissolution of the primary opposition parties, um, al-Wafaq and Wahad, uh, and the imprisonment of a number of key political figures from Bahrain, uh, including Hassan Mishema and um, Abdul Wahab Hussein. Meanwhile, uh, Bahrain's only independent newspaper was forcibly closed in 2017, um, while at least 15 journalists are currently imprisoned in the country. In May this year, the Bahraini government enacted new legislation barring anyone who has belonged to one of those former political parties and spent more than six months in prison from running for elected office, um, which basically means that pretty much anyone who was in an opposition party before now cannot run for election in Bahrain at all. Um, and now, only a couple of weeks before the election, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the primary opposition leader, Sheikh Ali Salman, was sentenced to life imprisonment in Bahrain. 